So the equation, perturbed or oscillating momentum, uh, momentum balance equation and a perturbed Gauss's law. And what we want to do is make use of these little handy dandy tricks that partial with respect to t goes to i omega and del goes to i k. So we'll stick those in this equation, in these equations. So uh, let's uh, just remember what our equations were first. Our density conservation equation, dn tilde plus n naught e del dot ve tilde is equal to zero. And again, what we do is we say, well, partial with respect to t goes to minus i omega, and del goes to i k vector. And you can confirm, if you work through this, uh, again, work out the parts, just like what we're doing here. But this then is k. It was, if it was the divergence of v, it becomes k dot v. So this equation just becomes minus i omega times n e tilde plus i uh, n naught e k dot v e tilde is equal to zero. Um, or it's uh, quite convenient to, um, to solve that, but I guess, uh, I guess I'll, well, I'll do it just a little bit. So n e tilde, I can then just take, divide through by the two, um, two factors of i and uh, divide through by omega, and what this becomes is then k dot v e tilde over omega times n sub e and naught e. And remember, or by the original form here, this effectively says there's only a density perturbation when you have a compressibility. Okay, so now our next equation was the momentum balance equation. And that was m e n naught e partial of v e tilde with respect to t is equal to minus e n naught e electric field and minus gamma t e gradient of n e tilde. Now again, all we have to do is we say, well, partial with respect to t is minus i omega. Uh, there's no gradients in that except that E is a minus grad phi, but we won't worry about that. And this gradient is I k vector. Okay. So, um, you know, this one we can, oh, this one we, yeah, we want to solve for the perturbed uh, flow velocity. But let me just write it out then. Minus I omega M E and not E V E tilde. So the, electric, uh, the flow velocity in the electrons is induced either by only two effects. One is the application of an electric field, and the other is uh, the, uh, is the thermal motion, gamma, T, E, and E tilde. Um, I guess... Um, well, and we can solve this then for the perturbed electron flow velocity. So we just divide through. Divide through means first that we get rid of all these minus signs. Um, and that, of course, is the perturbed flow velocity is only driven by a perturbed electric field, I omega me. The two n naughts cancel out between those two terms and by the thermal velocity effect, which is gamma Te um, over omega Me, and then k vector Ne tilde over N naught E. And we'll need that in a moment again. But you can already see what we're going to do is just substitute this into the V that we need there. Um, and our final equation that we're dealing with is then Gauss's law, divergence of E tilde is equal to minus E over epsilon naught times N E tilde plus rho free, free charge density divided by epsilon naught. 
And this then, okay, again, the del or del dot becomes I K vector. And uh, I think I just want to write it out as uh, I K vector dot E tilde is equal to minus E over epsilon naught and E tilde plus the free charge density fluctuations over epsilon naught. So that's our uh, third equation. And now we, as usual, go about combining these things a little bit. And so as I've indicated, the first combination that we do is we say that the compressibility that we have of the you know, non-zero divergence of the velocity, compression of the velocity, is coming about because of either an electric field or a thermal effect. And so let's uh, put that together. And what we then have, uh, just putting those two together, is we get N E tilde is equal to N naught E over omega, and then K dot V, but that becomes uh, K dot uh, E electric field, just writing out the flow velocity, I omega M E, plus gamma T E over omega M E, K vector N E tilde over N naught E. Now, 1 over I can also be written as, uh, in the numerator, uh, a minus I upstairs. Okay. Um, K dot E, I'll leave as a K dot E. What's K dot K? Well, that's the scalar inner product, so that's just going to be K squared. So putting all this together, what we then end up with is that N E tilde is N naught E over omega. Um, then there's a term which is uh, minus I, anyway, minus I K dot E times E over M E omega. And then this other term is plus gamma T E uh, K squared omega M E N E tilde over N naught E. And I didn't uh, write that out quite the easiest way. If I had gone ahead and put it in the N naught E, it would have been nice, but I didn't, so we now will. Um, and so what we find um, is that we have uh, a minus in this first term, I K dot E. That, by the way, is just the divergence of E converted, of course. And then we have uh, N naught E, E over M sub E omega squared. That's uh, collecting all that together. And then for this uh, last term, we have then plus, and now you remember we wrote before that gamma was equal to 3 and TE over ME was equal to 2 um, V thermal, sorry, V thermal squared, electron squared over 2. So uh, we can then write this last term and the, N, the equilibrium density cancels out of that. So we can then write this last term as plus 3 halves K squared V thermal electron squared over omega squared, because we have two omegas in the denominator, times NE tilde. Been forgetting to put tildes on the electric field. So here we have a situation where the, notice the electron density is driven by an electric field effect, but there's a relaxation or an additional effect due to the thermal motion. Okay? So we can put all that together uh, as we then get one, you know, take this over to the left hand side, we get one minus three halves K squared V thermal electron squared over omega squared times N E tilde is equal to minus I K dot E vector tilde and then N naught E E 
over m sub e omega squared. Or what we then write is that the electron density is, in fact, um, minus i k dot e. And we won't worry about dividing by 0, not because we don't worry about it in plasma physics, but because we'll be interested in oscillations for which we don't allow it to be 0. Um, anyway, n naught e, e divided by m e omega squared. So this is then the complete in the fluid limit. Um, kinetics, by the way, will soften this denominator and add an imaginary part, it turns out. So what this says is that if I apply an electric field to a plasma and that, uh, that it's a longitudinal electric field, which is to say the electric field has a component in the direction of k, then this will cause a density perturbation given by this formula, basically. Okay, now we need to uh, uh, use this, you remember, in um, Gauss's law. Um, so now that we have the density perturbation, we're ready to do that. So let's go back. Uh, oh, and by the way, this could be called, I should say that, I guess, this could uh, should be called the polarization density of the electron polarization density. Why is it called a polarization? Well, I apply an electric field and I get a density perturbation. So it is a polarization of the medium. It changes the charge density because I applied an electric field. Okay, so coming back to our Gauss's law, what we had was the divergence of E, I k tilde dot E, is equal to minus E over epsilon naught. Um, and then that was N E tilde um, plus rho free tilde over epsilon naught. Okay, so we want to plug in on the right on for the N E tilde that which we just obtained. So we'll keep it up here so we can see it. And uh, well, so put it in, we get plus, then I k dot e times, and now we get an n naught e, eh, uh, e squared over m sub e omega squared, all divided by 1 minus 3 halves k squared v thermal e squared over omega squared. Um, that was our polarization charge density, and then finally we have plus our free charge density, rho tilde free over epsilon naught. Now what's this quantity n naught e squared over m sub e omega squared? Well, that's what we found was our interesting electron plasma frequency squared, jiggle frequency for a typical plasma. Um, now, before we kind of do this, though, Notice that I will have constructed an equation out of this by using the polarization that I could also write as I k dot epsilon e tilde is equal to rho free over epsilon naught. I'm sorry, don't need the epsilon naught now. Where this is the displacement vector. So what I'm trying to say is that if I take account of this term together with this one, ha, and I, yeah, 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 I need a little bit of difference here, don't I? Uh, I need an epsilon naught, and so I'll put in an epsilon naught here. Um, well, I, I have to take account of my epsilon naught, and then I had forgotten to leave in an omega squared downstairs if I do it that way. Well, what I'm, I, I want to try to get at then is that I can put all of this together into an equation I k, da, or k, uh, k dot epsilon naught e tilde times 1 minus omega p e squared over um, my, oh, sorry, I'm down below. Sorry again, yeah, all right. 
Uh, omega squared minus uh, 3 halves k squared v thermal e squared. And this is equal to rho free over epsilon naught. And if I put my epsilon naught over there, not over there, then what I identify quite easily is that my dielectric constant, which I put a hat over to say it's a function all of k and omega, is in fact the free space dielectric constant, epsilon naught with a unity factor, but then minus omega p e squared divided by frequency squared over 3 halves k squared v thermal e squared. So this is then the dielectric constant for a plasma. And uh, at high frequencies, it turns out, of the order of the plasma frequency. And if I take the limit that t goes to 0, or it turns out that k squared, lambda to bi squared, goes to 0, then this becomes epsilon naught times 1 minus plasma frequency squared over, cyclo over free wave frequency squared. So this is then the dielectric constant uh, for the plasma, infinite homogeneous plasma, no, no magnetic field, uh, and so forth. Now, um, we could then solve, to come back to this equation, um, we could now imagine that we had a plasma with this dielectric constant relative to these particular waves. And what I'd like to solve for is the potential or the electric field that goes along with that. So let's uh, do that. These pens do seem to go out fairly quickly. But, uh, OK. And uh, so our equation then becomes I um, k dot epsilon hat e vector tilde is equal to rho free. Um, and now the kind of comment or problem is that uh, we'd like to have that our electric field was now electrostatics minus grad phi tilde. Grad is, of course, IK. So this goes to minus IK vector phi tilde. So we stick this in, and then we get minus IK dot I k epsilon hat electric field tilde is equal to the free charge. And this becomes k squared minus k squared minus minus is plus. So what we, I'm sorry, this is now the potential. Yeah, right, that's the potential. So what we find is that the potential that we have uh, which is now the wave k omega potential, really, is equal to the free charge that we might have in the medium divided by k squared, which is for the uh, Coulomb potential is the effect, well, what you get, the k squared. But now we have a dielectric constant epsilon hat, or we can write this as rho tilde free uh, all divided by k squared epsilon naught times 1 minus omega p e squared over omega squared. I, I'll leave out the other, the k squared part. So this says that the, you know, the dielectric constant of the medium that will dress particular charges in the medium uh, will be that. Now, um, what happens then? Uh, in such a medium. Well, if I have some free charge, this sort of says I'm going to get a singularity, meaning a, a stimulation of a normal mode, actually, at those frequencies at which the dielectric constant goes to zero. That is to say, if the dielectric constant goes to zero, I don't require any charge to stimulate a, a, uh, a particular fluctuation in the plasma. But if I have one, I surely stimulate one. So the comment that one then wants to make is for normal mode oscillations in a plasma, 
that is to say, ones that I do not have to stimulate with the charge density. But for normal mode oscillations in a plasma, what it likes to do, what we, what we do is we set that the dielectric constant epsilon hat of k and omega is equal to zero. And now I'll write back that what it was, what is, it was the dielectric constant of free space, epsilon naught, the del squared in Gauss's law, minus the electron plasma frequency squared divided by frequency squared minus 3 halves k squared v thermal e squared. So if I set that to zero, I can multiply through by that denominator. And what I find is that I have omega is equal to omega pe squared plus 3 halves k squared v thermal electron squared. Oh, I may well have. Ah, uh, uh, well, I kept. I I had it back here, you see, and so uh, I just yeah. Uh, actually, I had it. I had it on this slide where I had that the dielectric constant is number twelve, epsilon naught one minus omega p squared divided by the frequency squared minus three halves k squared v thermal e squared, and but then I just used the abbreviated one on the next one. Maybe I should have kept it. In any case, we'll keep it. Okay, so the idea then is that this becomes, this is the, this again is the so-called Bohm-Gross dispersion relation. And it is the dispersion relation for modes in a plasma. And it goes to, in the limits where k squared vanishes, it just goes to omega pe squared for k squared vanishing but you remember that the ratio of V thermal E to omega PE is the Debye length. So really, it's for K squared lambda Debye squared is much, greater, much less than 1, it turns out. On the other hand, it tends to go to 3 halves K squared V thermal E squared, which is to say something propagating at about the electron thermal speed for K squared lambda Debye electron squared greater than approximately the 1. But... This is, last part is fictitious because it turns out we need kinetic effects to do that right. And we'll come back to that later in the course to comment on that. But uh, it's, so it's just an, an indication. Okay, we'll uh, stop at this point. But the next thing we want to consider is that we could take the square root of that and we would get plus or minus the square root of omega PE squared plus three halves k squared v thermal e squared. And the next question we want to go on to is, what's the phase velocity of this wave? What's the group velocity? What's its dispersion relation look like? And some of those sorts of things. So we'll do that next time. <laughs>